Hey there and welcome to another Instagram grid challenge. In today's episode we'll be only allowed to use a wide angle lens. But before we jump in, let's roll the intro. Mm -hmm. By the way, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Gabby and I'm very passionate about photography and travel, mostly on a budget. Chances are, if you're here, you may like them too, so why not stick around and subscribe? It takes you two seconds, uh, but it does really support this channel. And in case, you can always change your mind, so thank you. Let's start off by explaining the rules. Number one, I have to take three pics that will eventually end up on my Instagram feed. Number two, these three pics have to look consistent with each other. And also, number three, they have to share a common team. The team of today's challenge is... well, I'll let the new recruit explain it. <laughs> Hello there, this is Gabi. And today, I'm here to tell you that they locked me in the dungeon because I haven't done interviews yet, so please send help, send help, please. <coughs> I mean, today I'm here because I'd like to share a quick introduction about today's challenge's team, which is wide-angle lenses. By common definition, a wide-angle lens has a wider field of view than our human vision. That means that any focal length below 35mm for full-frame cameras and below 24mm for crop sensor cameras is considered a wide-angle lens. Wide lenses are famous for a couple reasons. The first one is the typical distortion that happens at very short focal lengths, and the second one is that wide lenses are commonly thought to be useful only when it comes to landscape, but let me tell you, this is wrong. And as Mr. Gabi is about to show you, wide-angle lenses can be used in many different kinds of photography. Alright, can I be free now? <coughs> um, I mean, um, as my segment comes to an end, I surely do hope you enjoyed it, and now it's time to get back to the action. Goodbye. Alright, we are here in the countryside nearby my town and me while I was cycling I had this idea why don't we just tell a story with these three posts? And I kept thinking about it so I came up with three potential shots a classical landscape wide-angle shot to show the place and to give a setting then something I'd like to call a inside the action sort of shot but we'll talk about that later and lastly either a portrait shot or a detail shot and yes although this is a super wide angle we can do both of those by the way I'm sorry if you're seeing some grains on the image my sensor is not super clean and I'm shooting probably at f22 because there is a lot of light and I don't have an ND filter for uh, this camera so what to do but let's just start with the first shot so a good trick that you can use while taking pictures with a wide-angle shot is to use guiding lines such as this road here that will lead the viewer's eye on to well, that direction and the direction of the landscape itself. Uh, for the landscape I choose this. I will probably take a vertical shot of this, compose it somehow in order to make a big sky and small ground. Um, probably one third of the image will be ground and two thirds of the image will be sky yeah something minimal but that really shows this countryside and shows the day and let's see how the raw file looks like okay i'm going back to the bike because although i could take the second shot the um, inside of the action shot here because it's it's fine I would like to go a little bit forward in the in this road in order to find if there is any other cool place and I'll show you what I mean with inside of the action shot just in a while <sighs> this second shot took a while I don't know if you noticed but most times I am taking the shot first so I know how I took it and then I explain it to you because it's way more streamlined of a process and I can just you know go point by point by point and not waste your time but in this case man this was tough this was very very tough let me just move this bike so another great way of using wide-angle lenses 
is to get the viewer inside of the shot because it's so big that if you manage to bring him in it really works a very magical effect and this is what i wanted to do with my inside of the action kind of shot and i've been cycling so of course what better shot than cycling shot in a way that brings the viewer in now as a concept this is pretty straightforward but the execution that 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 was that was tough did i mention it was tough because it was very tough yeah in order to take this first person point of view shot i had to place myself and place the camera in in, in a way that that's that's so uncomfortable that, that just thinking about it, that I just took it five minutes ago and thinking about it still makes me in pain. But hey, don't trust my opinion, just, just look at this picture first. So yeah, that was uncomfortable, but pretty much what I did was I took the bike and I placed my camera here. I pre-focused it here in order to not have to worry about it. Oh, there's a rabbit there, nice. I focused here and I used a time shot so I, when I, I left my hand, the camera was, was just here. I placed my hands here. Like when I'm driving, I, of course, I am having both hands on the steering wheel. On the, uh, how do you call this in English? I don't know if editor Gabi is gonna be able to simulate some sort of movement in Photoshop maybe, but let's see how the raw file looks like. Hey, meanwhile I'm packing my tripod, I just wanted to say something that I didn't mention before, which is that I've been using a 20 mm focal length for the first picture and a 16 mm focal length for the second one, which is pretty wide for both of the pictures. And now I think I will be going back because this road is probably ending up in the wood and that's not the look I want to achieve, that's maybe for another day but I will go back and find a more flat terrain where I can see farther and from there we'll figure out if I'm gonna take either a portrait or a detail shot so let's go all right I've taken my last peek we are at the last location for this video and I ended up doing a detail shot shot vertical with a 16 mil and now that I said it probably some of you will be asking how did you manage to take a detail shot with such a wide angle lens? And well, the answer, the simplest answer is that I put my lens very, very close to my subject. Let me show you. Well, this plant, this little plant here is going to be my subject. Why? Let's say it's a decoy sort of subject. Now that the subject is decided, I just need to place my camera on my backpack, which is there for a reason and to do a lot of tries with time shots and let me show you why <laughs> basically every time i press the shutter speed i have about 10 seconds to come here then grab my bike and cycle in order to hopefully when the shutter speed is closing pass through the frame and let me tell you that that took a lot of tries <laughs> Hopefully, as soon as you see the raw file, you will be able to understand uh, what this whole crap here in acting meant. I do hope this whole video was useful to show you that wide-angle lenses can be used in many different ways. And, and well, let's just go home enjoying this beautiful sunset. All right, we're back to the studio and there you have it. Three pics that are almost ready to be shared. Now, all we miss is a little bit of editing, but that is a story for next week when my mate editor Gabi will show you how it's done. As always, if you don't wanna miss that video and the many more that are about to come, remember to subscribe, leave a like and share this video with your friends, if you enjoyed it, of course. Also, if you wanna find out if I ended up really posting these pics, Follow me on my other social medias, which are linked down below. I'll see you in the next video then. Have a nice day. Bye bye.